All right, I'm back. I got to chapter. I got to verse 25. I lost a signal, and I talked from 37 to. I'm down here at verse 25 of Isaiah, uh, chapter 37. Then they said, I have digged and drunk water, and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of the besieged places. And so God is still saying, I heard what you said. You said that you dried up all, you dried up all the, the water with your foot. Have you not heard long ago how I have done it? You, did you hear about how I did it? And at ancient times that I have formed it, now have I brought it to pass that thou should be to lay waste defense cities and to ruinous heaps. Let me read that again. Have you not heard about what I did a long time ago, how I, have, how I did it? Of old times that I have formed it, now have I brought it to pass that you have that you should be to lay waste defense cities into ruinous heaps. All right, so all that you heard about me is true, and what I'm getting ready to do only adds to my resume. I can and will do it, he thought. Therefore, their habitations were of small power, they were dismayed and confounded they were as the grass of the field and of the green herb as the grass on the housetop and as corn blasted before it be grown up so he's still boasting and some say this is god telling him what he did but i want to look at it from the angle that assyria is telling um everybody how bad he is or i mean how bad he is as in to destroy others not admitting that he is bad because he is 28 verse but i know and this is god talking he said i heard all you had to say assyria but i know where you are i know where you live i know when you leave the house and i know when you come in and i know your rage against me i know you're mad at me because when you're mad at my people then you mad at me. Because of your rage against me and your torment, all your confusion is come up into my ears. Therefore, will I put my hook in your nose? Because what they did was when you became subdued by the enemy, they would put something in your nose and in your and clip your lip. And they knew you weren't going to go far because they had sensitive areas you know, you, you, you put a if you put a chain in my nose or some type of pull in my nose and then you hold my lip to it and then the next person's, it's not much I can say or go. I can't hardly go anywhere. I got to go to the restroom with somebody. Everything that I did, I had to do it publicly. <clears throat> but God is saying, because what you did to others, I'm going to do to you. I'm going to put a hook in your nose. And my and my bridle in your lips and i would turn you back by the way by which you came what you did to others i'm getting ready to show you how i feel and this shall be a sign unto you oh assyria you're gonna eat this year such all that grows of itself in other words Whatever you can find to eat, that's what you're going to get. And some people say this is going back to talking to Judah, but let me keep it in the vein that I understand. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall eat this year such as groweth of itself. This is going to be a sign. Now, even if we said God was speaking to the Judah, it still sounded like hard times. But let's, I'm going to keep it to where he's talking to the Syrians. In other, way, in other words... Whatever grows up, you know how something just grows on its own and, and you, you, you're going to be so hungry, you eat whatever it is. And the second year, that which springs of the same. And in the third year, sow ye and reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruit thereof. I'm thinking that God is talking to uh, 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 Assyria. In other words, you're gonna be, it's going to be hard to get food for two years and then the third year you're gonna work like everybody else instead of dragging people by the nose and dragging people by 
the lip. You can go out there and you'll be acting like regular people when I get through with you. And those remnants that is escaped, those that kind of get away of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. In other words, even though scholars that probably know more than me, they may say something different on here, but they would never take away from who God is. So even if I see it this way and somebody else said, well, I see this as God talking to Judah, it still won't take away and we'll argue about it. It'll be where I see it from an angle that you probably didn't think about. And then you can share your angle. And that's how you get along with the word of God. David was the king and he made a decision to do something that God said, don't do it like that. So sometimes I could be making a mistake and sometimes other people can make one. But this is how I see this. He says, some of y'all going to escape from Mount Zion. They that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. If anybody get away from me, I got my eyes on you. And therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria. He says, I'm still talking to you. He shall not come into this city. You're, going, you're not going to touch Jerusalem. Nor shoot an arrow there. You're not going to even be that close. Nor come before it with shields. You're not coming with ammunition. Nor cast a bank against. You're not going to do anything to these people. And I want you to hear me and I want you to hear me good. By the way that he came. By the same way he returned. And shall not come into this city, says the Lord. You are not going to bother my people. They have an assignment. And you are not going to interrupt them while they take this final exam, Mr. Assyria. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Then the angel of the Lord. Now he said, God, I'm done talking. Take the mic. If I may say that. I told you that anything that you try to do against these people is not going to work. And after God got through speaking, the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and four score and five thousand. That means one hundred and eighty five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpse. A hundred and eighty five thousand husbands, uncles, daddies died that night. And all God got to do basically is send a plague, send a virus, and he could knock a whole camp out. And he said, I don't need anybody's ammunition. You are talking to God. Please don't talk against me. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed. Once he found out, this man was like, I, guess I got to go. And went and returned and dwelt in Nineveh. This is the same place that God told Jonah to go preach to. The capital of Assyria. And it came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of Nishrach, his God. Now he did go to his God, lowercase g, that his two sons, Adramalak and Shazia, his sons killed him with a sword and they escaped. God let them get away or they got away and God permitted it so into the land of Armenia. And Esachar Hadden, now the two guys that killed him, but somebody else reigned in his stead. And Esachar Hadden, his son, another son, reigned in his stead. So God has shown us in Isaiah 36, speak against me. Then you got to let me do my part. I'm going to talk back to you. You told me that I could not fight you? And God said, you know that wasn't true. 185,000 soldiers did because one man decided to lead these people in the wrong direction. And then the king himself finally was killed by his own family. God has said, leave my people alone. They are on an assignment. I've already dealt with the upper uh, kingdom uh, um, of Israel, the northern kingdom, because they wouldn't listen to me. They were they were the religion people. They were the people that took God's word and read it like them. 
Uh, go to, uh, I want y'all to turn to uh, Isaiah 37 and go to verse 31. When you read like that, it's insane. That you would go through uh, the middle of what God is doing to a country and pull out one scripture and hop and dance around a scripture that you should have left in that place. This is some dangerous information that if we misquote it, don't read it right, make you feel good. Because we like our, we like itchy ears and we like somebody to make us feel good in our ears. Leave the scriptures alone. Read it according to the way God said it. Do not take Isaiah 37 and go to verse. Just read the whole verse. 37 and you will not understand 37 if you don't understand the other books that led all the way up to chapter 37 this is isaiah's testimony isaiah is in the courtroom speaking i'm saying that so we can understand it and he's testifying so all 66 books is his testimony and we do not have the right to pull anything out and talk about it and make people happy well, that just encouraged me. That's just my favorite scripture. Uh, okay. You cannot read the word like that. That's like taking a math problem and say, oh, I just, if I say 36 divided by six, oh, I just like that 36. That's my favorite number. What that got to do with 36 divided by six? So what God is saying, please do not take my scripture and pick on it and then create say, saying something that's insane. That's what we have done, and that's why God had to destroy all these people. And Assyria was the country that God used to wipe these people out or to get them into uh, um, exile. Because he said, if you're not going to teach my word, you're going to mess people's minds up. And we are so messed up until we say things that the word, I, have to, I listen to people now since I've been reading the word, I'm going like, what? I used to do the same thing, but I had sense enough as an instructor to go back and reread to make sure, oh, Lord, did I say these? Things? Yep, you did. So this whole chapter 37 is saying that God has the last word. Please know that when we don't know what God's word is saying, we may be as Sennacherib blaspheming, saying what God can't do. And what we make up God did, because a lot of times we make up and say God did something. God ain't do that. He said, I don't work like this. If I paid your bill, you better believe you didn't file bankruptcy. I mean, you can file it, but he said, but a lot of people say things, get in debt, and then they jump around and say that I made a way for them. He said, I don't work like that. My, my blessings are, it, it don't make you upset in the end. <laughs> you don't add sorrow to what I say. So I would say, take this book, and even if you go into the book of Isaiah, Isaiah, what the uh, 37 and, and 36 and 37 chapter says is the same thing that's in 2 Kings. And it's the same scripture that's in Chronicles. I didn't know that because I didn't know how to read the word. They are repeating the same action, the same words. And when you get to Isaiah, it's going to be the same exact accord, uh, 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 account. What does that tell me? That is true. I got three witnesses saying the same thing. I got Isaiah said, I was there and I saw it. I got whoever wrote Kings and second Kings said, I was there, I saw it. And then the recorder, um, and they say Ezra might've wrote one of those books, but whoever wrote it, they all wrote the same thing. When God said, where were you this morning at 9.30? I can say, and everybody that saw me, they can say she was in the pool. Why, what makes that valid? We all said the same thing. That's how you read the word of God. You don't just, oh, hallelujah. We, we, we so toe up until God is saying, if we, we got to go back and respect this word. If you're going to make money out this word, make a living out this word, at least teach the people how to read the word. Most of us don't have a clue to what God is saying, but we just as religious and we got the same defeated homes as a person that never knew God. It ain't no way in the world I would have been married to a man that would beat me upside my head and I knew what I'm reading now because I know my rights. I never would have married you. I was out of, you know, I did. I was married somebody because he was a member of my church. But marriage hurt. But now that I understand how to read the word, I, I can't do nothing but try to do it the best I can now. And God has allowed me three years 
three years to open up this book every day and sit here and gain an understanding just like I was teaching in the classroom. So I would encourage any church that has a teacher and they were a good teacher in school. I don't even understand how good teachers don't tell people how to read the word. It makes me wonder where you have a good teacher. Because you got everybody picking on this book like we at Golden Corral. Just said, I don't want no salad. I God said, ain't how you, that's not how I follow. You had to follow me. I'm the shepherd. I'm going to tell you when to go left and I'm going to tell you when to go right. But if you take this word and snatch out of it, you're going to be lying on me. You're going to say I did something because you can't figure it out. I am not hard to get along. I just mean for you to take your time and gaze upon me. So when you go to Brenda's, when Brenda read the word, you say, I read the same thing. And that's what I do. I sit with people that read and they see what I say. And whatever we see differently, maybe because of our culture different, like, you know, we might say we may not pronounce the same thing. We may see God in a different angle, but the truth of the skeleton of the word is always the same. These guys know what they're talking about. I sit with them every single day and sometimes more than one. And I read their commentators and then I bring mine how I am. I'm, I'm subject to look like this or that. <laughs> I just be myself. But anyway, um, I'm sitting in the hot car. I just got through handling some business and I ain't got out of my car yet. But I had started this video and then the heat hit it and my phone cut it off. But anyway, I read back from 25. So the whole lesson today, God is saying, get to know me. If you say anything about me that's not true and have people misled, I got to deal with you accordingly. And that is my promise. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. That means the thing that keeps us together, the yoke. You got to take your time and read the word. You can, if you, I said this and I pray. And I'm done. I pray that every leader teach the people, teach the people, at least, and it's going to take about three years. That type of discipline. To learn, let the people know what the word said. Then you can take passages from the scripture and explain it in a, in a in a way where people you want to say something but the bottom line is people won't need you but right now you go to bookstores at any church most of those books are written by those pastors you got more books written by you and he's saying this book right here does the people no good they do not come to me because when you die your sales gonna die but my word it ain't die it will not die this book has been on sale since the beginning of time Oh, God has been speaking. So what I'm saying, God is accountable for his book. And guess what? He said, I give it to you free. If you can't buy this copy right here, you just go online. You can get a copy of it free. In fact, go somewhere there. That you can just pick up one. That's how bad I want you to get to know me. And no church that I've ever gone to in my life has went chapter by chapter, verse by verse. They talk about it, but never did it. And you shouldn't have to do this at home by yourself, but you can but everybody, before you do anything in this life, we ought to have a clear understanding. What did Jesus mean when he said, first, he meant it. Seek ye, what? The kingdom of God, what? And the way he do th does things, which is how to do things right. Nothing religious. I don't believe like that. I believe a woman ought to do that. I think a man ought to do that. I think you're supposed to wear all this foolishness. And this book is about business. And if we don't return after three years of, of Corona and you still don't know the word of God, you don't want to know God. I hate to say it, but what happened to the children of Israel was an example of what had happened to us. God wiped them folk off the face of the earth. He sent them back to the Red Sea and said, y'all gonna, and, and get what Moses said, them folks said, Lord, them folk ain't doing it, but walk around telling tales. That's the word of God, but we don't know that. We say anything that God says, it's like it's a fairy tale. Moses said, for 40 years, I'm for walked around the wilderness telling to you, just like we do today. I'm so tired of hearing people saying what the word said. Girl, you know, God, I, the word. This book is too much business to be pulling things. At least to me, it is. So I pray that every, you got T.D. Jakes. I'm talking about the black church. You got Creflo Dollar. You got Kenneth Copeland. You got all these people. You got Joyce Myers. And all of those people come in and they are icons to the body, what we call the body, to the, to some. 
All I pray is that these mighty people, or if they say they might, I don't know. All I know, you humans are like me, and God's all y'all ain't nothing but a nostril of breath. But we tightly folk. But if you got that much influence, I beg you, I beseech you, I ask you, teach us like you would a regular book how to read and study. We're, what? Why are these words italicized? How is it that Chronicles and First and Second King line up with each other? How is it that Isaiah is repeated? Why is that? We don't know. And you don't either. Because you didn't take the time. You saw something in the word. You pulled it out. And you had all us beholding you. Because God was talking to you. And we were wondering why he don't talk to us like that. All I can say to y'all, you bleed that stuff if you want to. They human just like you. I don't want to name all these folks. I named Creflo because I like him. I like T.D. Jakes. I like George Meyer. And they some of the people that really helped shape me in some areas. But I needed the God I know that said I can speak for myself. I do not. Have, I don't need to be. No, no, no. When I was, I used to chew my food up sometimes. 